हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस सुभाष चंद्र बोस एंड द इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी इन डिटेल सो वॉट हैपन वॉज दैट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू हैड स्टार्टेड ऑन फर्स्ट सेप्टेम्बर नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन ब्रिटेन हैड कॉलोनीज एट मेनी प्लेसेज इन साउथ ईस्ट एशिया लाइक फिलिपींस हॉन्गकॉन्ग मलाया सिंगापुर एट्सेट्रा Now because Britain and Japan were face to face in World War 2 the threat of Japanese attack on these British colonies was constantly hovering that is why the British government sent around 70000 Indian troops to these British colonies and at the same time on 3rd September 1939 Lord Linlithgow gave a declaration without asking the Indian leadership where he said that India is supporting Britain in World War 2 This declaration of Viceroy enraged the whole country. People believed that the Indian politicians who had been elected in the 1937 elections you should have at least asked them. In protest against this the Congress had resigned from the provincial ministry and at such a time Subhash Chandra Bose said that resigning from the provincial ministry is not enough he demanded to launch civil disobedience movement in the Congress meeting but Gandhi ji was not agreeing on this. So Bose thought that like Gandhi ji if not in the whole country at least in Calcutta he can start a mass protest so Bose himself started a mass protest in Calcutta to remove the Holwell monument Holwell was one of those few people who survived the black hole incident in memory of the black hole incident he had built this monument with his own money the black hole incident was a very painful incident in which 146 people were crammed into a small room in which 126 people died of suffocation to understand this incident in detail you can watch the battle of plassey video so the british government had a strong emotional connection with the holwell monument and subhash chandra bose is saying that remove this monument from here so it is obvious that the british government would not be able to agree to this so they picked up subhash chandra bose and put him in jail What did Bose do that he started a 7 day hunger strike in jail which worsened his health so the british government took him out of jail and shifted him to his own house and police were monitored all around outside the house which means he was arrested in his own house he could not leave the house and go anywhere So what did Bose do that he grew his beard a little and on 17th January 1941 in the guise of a pathan he escaped by dodging the police he left calcutta and reached peshawar and then through the northwest frontier province to afghanistan and from there to soviet russia and from russia to italy and finally to germany at that time there were many indian soldiers in the prisoners of war camp in germany Now where did these soldiers come from basically these soldiers were soldiers of the british army who were deployed in north africa due to world war 2 the axis power which included germany had taken them captive so these soldiers were basically brought from north africa to germany as prisoners of war so subhash chandra bose gathered these indian prisoners of war with the help of german authorities and formed an army so that this army could throw out the british government from india there were around 4500 indian soldiers in this army and this army was called the free indian legion now you must be thinking that why german authority was supporting bos to make army right so german authority was supporting because german authority and hitler were also benefited in this in world war 2 britain and germany were face to face so if seen if subhash chandra bose forms an army and attacks britain then who is benefited in this germany is also benefited because his opponent is being attacked his opponent is getting weaker but in the meantime two or three such things happened which made subhash chandra bose doubt germany's intentions and he started losing faith in germany so those two or three things were that firstly hitler was planning to invade russia secondly he had written something in his autobiography which subhash chandra bose did not like and thirdly something happened in the meeting between subhash chandra bose and hitler which subhash chandra bose did not like so the first point is hitler's plan of russia invasion basically hitler was planning to invade russia Netaji was continuously writing letters to German authorities talking to them that don't do this actually the thing is that india's majority of population has always had a soft corner for russia 
and if germany invades russia then indians will not consider germany as their friend but enemy and anyway hitler's image was already bad in the minds of the people despite netaji's repeated persuasion germany invaded russia on 22nd june 1941 Besides, Netaji wanted Hitler to remove some offensive statements written about India in his autobiography Mein Kampf. Hitler completely ignored Netaji's request. Now you must be wondering that what things Netaji got into? He has to free India or Russia. And what difference does it make that what Hitler is writing in his autobiography? And anyway, why would he change his autobiography? World War 2 is going on there. he will make his war strategy or he will set to change his autobiography anyway he wrote this book in 1925 and netaji is asking him to change it in 1941 basically you try to understand what was netaji's intention netaji was trying to drive british government out of india with the help of hitler and at such a time if indians have anger towards germany or hitler then the people of india will get angry on netaji that netaji from whom are you asking for help the people of britain are better than them so this is the matter and besides this the third event that is the meeting between netaji and hitler netaji completely lost faith in germany and hitler because here netaji had a feeling that this man is not trustworthy it may happen that he may help to remove britain from india but later invade india himself so subhash chandra bose thought that instead of wasting time in germany it is better to talk to japan japan was also fighting against britain in world war 2 and an enemy's enemy is a friend and anyway japan and germany's attitude towards india remained slightly different so netaji now had a lot of hope from japan that is why in february 1943 he took a submarine and turned towards japan Netaji had set out in a submarine but had left behind those 4000 Indian soldiers whom he named the Free Indian Legion. So Netaji was about to reach Japan. But at that time a tremendous scene was going on in Japan. We will have to go into a little flashback to see what was actually happening in Japan. In the beginning of this video I said one thing that as soon as World War 2 started Lord Lilithgow had declared without asking Indian leadership that India is supporting Britain in World War 2 and also deployed around 70000 Indian troops in South East Asian countries In these troops Mohan Singh was the head of the battalion which was sent to Malay Peninsula. We have already discussed why this battalion was sent because Britain had colonies in Southeast Asia and due to World War 2 the danger of Japanese attack was constantly hovering. And this estimate of Britain turned out to be absolutely correct. Along with Malaya, the Japanese army attacked all the Southeast Asian colonies of the British government and occupied all the colonies one after the other. During this attack, Japan had captured many Indian soldiers of the British regiment, including Mohan Singh. You know that the soldiers who were held captive in the war are called prisoners of war. Now, if you have seen the video of Gadar movement, then you must know that in 1915, after the failure of Gadar movement, Raj Bihari Bose had gone to Japan. In Japan, Raj Bihari Bose had formed Indian Independence League in 1942 with the support of Japanese government. The purpose of forming Indian Independence League was to liberate India with the help of Japanese government. He convinced the Japanese government that an army should be formed under their organization that is the Indian Independence League which would liberate India against the British government. Japan will also get benefit from this because Japan and Britain are opponents and Britain would be weakened by this. Idea was to form an army by gathering Indian prisoners of war caught in Malaya and other Southeast Asia. Now prisoners of war were available, but they had to find such a general who could collect all these prisoners of war and prepare a good military. A name came in his mind, Mohan Singh. Raj Bihari Bose along with Japanese officer Major Fujiwara approached Mohan Singh and said that you prepare an army by collecting all Indian prisoners of war. This decision was not so easy for Mohan Singh because from the age of 18 he was working for the British government and now he was being told that he had to make an army and attack the British army on the contrary 
That is, he had to betray the one whose salt he ate. But the country was bigger for him than salt. Mohan Singh started preparing to form a national Indian army. He picked up 4,000 prisoners of war from Malaysia, 40,000 from Singapore. Apart from this, prisoners of war were also gathered from other Southeast Asian colonies. And finally, the Indian National Army was prepared. And Mohan Singh himself became the general of this army. The army that was formed is also called the First Indian National Army. But Mohan Singh was also having the same feeling for Japan that Netaji was having for Germany. That is, somewhere Mohan Singh was feeling that the Japanese only wanted to use the Indian National Army. Because of this, Mohan Singh had many disagreements with the Japanese leadership. Due to these disagreements, relations between Mohan Singh and Japan deteriorated. And ultimately, on 29th December 1942, Mohan Singh was removed from command and handed over to the Japanese military force. And the Indian National Army was also disbanded. Whatever troops or prisoners of war that were gathered earlier was sent back to the prisoners of war camp. So this was the flashback. Now let's talk about what happened when Subhash Chandra Bose reached Japan in 1943. With the arrival of Subhash Chandra Bose, the idea of independence army was revived once again. In July of the same year, a meeting was called in Singapore. In this meeting, Raj Bihari Bose gave the control of the Indian Independence League to Subhash Chandra Bose. Subhash Chandra Bose raised the Indian National Army once again with his efforts. Netaji's popularity was so big that as soon as it was known that Netaji would now lead the Indian National Army, the Indian population in Southeast Asia got such massive support that not only prisoners of war but many civilians also joined the Indian National Army. And not only that, they supported them financially. And the Indian National Army was ready once again. Subhash Chandra Bose also created a separate women unit in the Indian National Army, which was named Rani of Jhasi Regiment. This regiment was headed by Captain Lakshmi Swaminathan. In those days, only Netaji could think of making an all-women combat squad. This was the first time in the military history of the whole world that such an incident was seen that an all-women combat squad was formed. A special thing about the Indian National Army was that there was no discrimination of any kind between the soldiers of the Indian National Army, be it Hindu soldier or Muslim soldier. All are equal. Everyone's kitchen was also same. Apart from this, caste, color and state did not matter to anyone. All soldiers were equal, although the same thing did not apply in the British Indian Army. There was Sikh Regiment, Gorkha Regiment, thus separate regiments were formed there. There was caste, creed and all kinds of separation. The Indian National Army had four brigades, the Gandhi Brigade, the Azad Brigade, the Nehru Brigade and the Subhash Brigade. Netaji gave a powerful slogan to the Indian National Army that, Give me blood, I'll give you freedom. Apart from this, you must have heard a song, Kadam Kadam Badhaya Ja. This song is also given to us by the Indian National Army. Along with this, if you have heard the slogan of Jai Hind, which we still hear from the mouth of the Indian military, we have got this salutation from the Indian National Army only. The thing to be understood here is that Netaji did not just set up the Indian National Army, he had formed a provisional government whose name was the Azad Hind Government. The Indian National Army was the army of the Azad Hind Government only. In fact, that is why the Indian National Army is also called the Azad Hind Forge. The Azad Hind government was India's provisional government, which was established in Singapore. They had their own currency notes, postage stamps, and they had their own courts and laws. The prime minister of this government was Subhash Chandra Bose. And like every government, there were many ministers, like S.A. Iyer was the Minister of Broadcasting and Publicity. Apart from this, Lieutenant Colonel A.C. Chatterjee was the Minister of Finance. And many other such portfolios and ministers were in this government. The Azad Hind government was recognized by nine countries as the government of India. These countries were Germany, Japan, Italy, Croatia, China, Burma and Philippines and the Indian National Army had diplomatic relations with these countries. But no matter how many countries have recognized it, we should not forget that Azad Hind government was running only with the financial, political and military support of Japan. So some or the other dependency was obviously on Japan. And anyway, they still did not have any such place where they have sovereignty. 
देर इज अ गवर्नमेंट देर इज अ कंट्री बट हियर देर ओन कंट्री वॉज अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ ब्रिटेन सो दिस प्रॉब्लम वॉज सॉल्व वेन जापान कैप्चर द अंडमान एंड निकोबार आईलैंड इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी थ्री सो आफ्टर कैप्चरिंग द नॉमिनल अथॉरिटी ऑफ दीज रीजन वॉज गिवेन टू द आजाद हिंद गवर्नमेंट आफ्टर गेटिंग कंट्रोल आजाद हिंद गवर्नमेंट डिड वन थिंग फर्स्ट द नेम ऑफ दिस आईलैंड वॉज चेंज टू शहीद एंड स्वराज we used a word nominal authority this means that basically the authority of this island is with indian national army but still there were some japanese forces this means that the complete authority was not with the indian national army or the azad hind government that is why we called it nominal authority here after this in april 1944 the azad hind army while fighting with the imperial japanese army registered its first victory on indian soil this victory was recorded in arakan manipur and nagaland The Indian National Army had entered Kohima in Nagaland and Imphal in Manipur and there is a place in Manipur Moirang here the Indian National Army hoisted the flag of India for the first time but what happened after that was there was a lot of shortage of logistics the condition was very bad leave bullets and guns the Indian National Army did not even have food In such a way the British forces started air raids on the occupied areas the combined forces of the Japanese and the Indian National Army could not face it and had to leave the Indian front and run away Ultimately in World War 2 the allied forces that is Britain and America won Indian National Army and Japan has lost both Burma campaign and World War 2 Approximately 16000 soldiers of Indian National Army were taken prisoner by British forces. Meanwhile in August 1945 news came that Netaji died in a plane crash. Indian National Army and its dream was shattered. In another video we will discuss Indian National Army trials in detail. The notes of this video are available on bookstava.com website you will find the link in the description videos are available on bookstava channel on many topics of history you can watch them too in the playlist of modern history you will find all the videos from the arrival of east in a company till the independence of india if you like this video then do not forget to press like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to bookstava channel to keep watching more such videos thank you so much for watching bookstava